So I just finished watching the Logan Paul KSI fight, and seeing that I have a bit of a background in boxing, uh, I figured I'd give my thoughts on it. This is going to be a bit of an unscripted vlog-style video of me just kind of giving my thoughts about, you know, the live stream in general, uh, the semi-main event, which was uh, Jake Paul versus Denji, and uh, the main event, which is obviously Logan Paul versus KSI. Fair warning, there will be spoilers to all the fights, or at least some of the fights that happen in this uh, video. So if you haven't seen the live stream yet, uh, there's your warning. All right, so one thing I want to get out of the way right off the bat is the question of, do I think the live stream is worth it? Do I think the live stream is worth the $10 US, uh, $13 Canadian um, to actually watch? And honestly, 100%, the answer is yes. Uh, I think that it is entertaining enough uh, if you want to watch it simply for the celebrity appearances, as in celebrities and the YouTubers. If you're a boxing fan, you're definitely not going to see a hell of a lot of skill, but there are some very decent fights. There's a few fights where um, they're just simple slugfests, but the tenacity of the two fighters are just very entertaining to watch. and. Uh, so there's some pretty brutal and pretty um, decent all-around fights. That isn't to say the card doesn't have its problems. Uh, specifically, the inexperience of the fighters, I believe, is a very big detriment to this card. Um, one thing I want to get out of the way, though, is that I believe anyone who is brave enough and has the courage to step into the boxing ring deserves respect. That is something that is very commendable and is something that very few people can do and anyone that actually has the balls to step in one-on-one -on -one and fight another man or a woman, whatever, uh, deserves respect for that. However, I believe personally that the first two events on the card shouldn't have happened. The fighters just weren't ready. Um, both were extremely inexperienced. They moved very stiff. And I'm, when I say both, I mean both fighters in both fights. Uh, were very stiff, they didn't throw a hell of a lot of combinations, and in terms of the second fight specifically, I believe uh, the YouTuber's name was Momo, um, he got away with some things he really shouldn't have, and he did some things he really shouldn't have. Uh, in the second fight, uh, he, like two or three times, in one round, Momo was able to break out into a Fortnite dance. One of them was like the hype dance, I think he did the hype dance twice, I think he did the Orange Justice or something, and um, that's just unacceptable. Um, that's not something that somebody would do in an actual boxing match because, in all honesty, they'd get punished really badly for it. Uh, which, in my opinion, just shows to the testament of the inexperience of his opponent. Now, this isn't a bad thing. I don't want to say this is something that's all bad. I believe that all four of these fighters in both of these matches deserve tremendous props for being brave enough to step into the ring in an event that's as big a scale as this with as little experience as they had. It is honestly something to be commended, but in terms of actual training, they weren't ready for a fight. I think that it would have been a lot smarter to have them uh, train a little bit longer, give them a little bit more time to maybe master the basics a little bit more, uh, move around with a partner, spar a little bit, and really get to know the ring before truly stepping into a fight. Because let us I want to make something clear. Um, sparring is very, very different from actual fighting. Uh, sparring, you can fight forever. Like, once I sparred half an hour straight, it was like 10 three minute rounds. I used to do that every Sunday in uh, my basement in this gym that you see behind me. Um, I'd move the bag and I'd clean up the area back there. And I used to spar 10 three minute rounds with the next pro every Sunday. And it was, I did it like it was nothing. Um, but in a fight, it's very different. Uh, the atmosphere really plays a part, um, the fact that you want to win really plays a part, so you're pushing, you're going harder, you're pushing, it, it's like, it's the difference between running a long distance and then sprinting a marathon, and no matter how tough sparring gets, it's never truly to that same level as an actual fight because the desire to win, and you, people gas out really quickly because that, that desire to win causes a lot of anxiety and stress, which, you know, can lead people to be a lot more tense, and they burn a lot more energy. Um, for the benefit of the fighters, I truly believe that they should have given, been given uh, a lot more time to train, and a lot more time to familiarize themselves with the ring. All that being said, I really enjoyed this card. 
um, the fight with Fei Sensei, uh, I believe was truly one of the more skilled fights on this card. Uh, both fighters, Fei Sensei included, still looked really, really stiff. Um, and they didn't really move as fluidly as someone who, you know, boxed for a long time would have. But uh, they definitely, both fighters, Face Sensei as well as his opponent, showed great skill, uh, or at least a skill that was a step above the rest, and showed that both of them truly did practice martial arts on a regular basis. That was the whole thing, is that, you know, Face Sensei as well as his opponent were uh, people who were martial artists and people who had fought before, and that was something that really showed. I think that's great. Uh, the fight with Gib and Jay was also a very, very good fight. That fight didn't have a lot of skill, but it was mainly a massive slugfest, but man, was that a very entertaining slugfest to watch. The tenacity of both fighters, the determination on both of them was such a great thing to watch, and it's such a great thing to see, uh, especially for an event that, personally speaking, I originally didn't think much of, to see people pour their heart and soul into it like that and just get really into it and to push through it despite the fact that they're bleeding and that they're tired was something that I really thought was really cool and really great. Uh, Scarce's fight was really good too. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to um, congratulate Scarce on his weight loss. I think he's already a winner in that sense. He's a winner in my book. And just a further comment on the Scarce fight. I think it serves to further back up my point about um, the fighters not truly being ready for the ring yet, um, Raka Raka, to his credit, used a strategy that worked for him. It's the style that I call the bull style. It's where the fighter goes head down, runs at his fighter, punch, 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 and tries to punch as much times as he can, as powerful as he can, to try and overwhelm his opponent, kind of like a charging bull. Uh, this worked for him, and good, good for him. I believe that, you know, he did a very good job fighting. If I were his coach, I would have probably told him to try and tweak it a little bit to be a little bit more on the defensive, maybe a, like a few tighter punches, less haymakers, maybe, you know, hands up a little bit more, elbows in, but good on Raka Raka. It was clear that Scarce was overwhelmed by Raka Raka's very aggressive style. He kind of turtled up, he didn't really uh, attack, he, he didn't punch very much, it seemed like he didn't really know what to do or how to handle someone as aggressive as Raka Raka, and I think that serves to back me up when I say that uh, a little bit more time and a little bit more training uh, was needed for these fighters and for these um, people before they stepped into the ring because uh, with a little bit more training, a little bit more sparring, uh, Scarce probably could have had a better chance, a better idea of how to deal with an aggressive fighter like Raka Raka, but uh, given the fact that they didn't have so much time and Scarce was inexperienced in boxing, um, I think that it just overall worked to his detriment, the fact that these, uh, he didn't give, have a lot of time to really get to know the ring, get to know the sport, and get to know the different styles. Uh, all in all though, uh, really commendable, uh, and I honestly think that this live stream, 100% is worth your money. It's $13, Canadian, where I'm from. Movies are $15 here in Canada, and uh, they're about two hours long, hour and a half long. The live stream was six, so for the price of a movie, you're getting three times the length. And honestly, the two main events, or the main event and the semi-main event, Jake Paul versus Denji and then Logan Paul versus KSI, were two very, very good matches. And that kind of wraps up my thoughts on uh, the card as a whole. It's definitely worth your money. Um, but now I'd like to talk about the semi-main event of the evening, which was Deji versus Jake Paul. And I'd like to start off this section of the video by uh, commending Deji. He fought very well. He fought very hard. And although he was stopped in the fifth round, um, he put up a great fight. He was very tenacious, he was very determined, and no matter how hard he got hit, no matter how hard um, or how many times he got hit, he kept coming, he kept pushing, and he kept pushing himself, and that is truly something to be commended. That is truly something to commend him for, rather. Uh, I would also like to congratulate and commend Jake Paul. Um, he was actually a very good boxer. Okay, very good. Maybe not very good. He was actually a decent boxer. You could tell that he had a bit of an idea of what he was doing. He was a little bit more fluid, he threw a little bit more combos, and his footwork was a little bit better than um, the majority of the people I saw on that card. And uh, honestly, that surprised me. I did not expect this fight to be anything but a joke, honestly speaking. When I first sat down to watch it, 
uh, I was in complete tilted overreact mode, but in all honesty, um, this was a good match. Honestly speaking, Jake Paul surprised me with how much he was able to do with boxing. He obviously worked hard at it, and his skills showed. I truly believe that the semi-main event was a good fight to watch. It hyped me up the first time I saw it, and both fighters, both boxers should be commended for the great work that they did in the ring. There is also something I want to get out of the ray, the ray, the way right away. And that is the fact that I do not care how much people hate Logan and Jake Paul. Or KSI for that matter, and his brother, Keiji. I don't care. I, I am not evaluating them as people, and I'm trying to remain as unbiased as I possibly can, and I'm judging them purely based on their boxing. I'm judging their boxing skill, their strategies, and how they did in the fight. And if they do good in the fight, if they do good boxing, if they're doing what they're supposed to do, I will commend them for it. I don't care if it's Logan Paul, I don't care if it's Jake Paul, I don't care if it's Kiss, I don't care if it's Deji. Um, Mike, not Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali is considered one of the greatest boxers, if not the greatest boxer, arguably, of all time. He was a terrible person. But, in terms of his boxing, it is undeniable that he was a very skilled boxer, and that is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to look purely at how Jake and Logan Paul boxed, and how Deji and KSI boxed, and just kind of giving my thoughts on the matches as a whole. Not whether or not I wanted a certain person to win, or a certain person to lose, because I didn't. I honestly don't care about Jake and Logan Paul, or Deji and KSI. I showed up to watch YouTubers box, and I'm going to comment purely on the YouTuber boxing aspect of it. And I want to make that clear right off the gate. Alright, here we are, the meat and potatoes of this video, the moment you've all been waiting for, the main event. Logan Paul versus KSI. What are my thoughts? Honestly, a great fight. I honestly really, really liked the Logan Paul KSI fight. I think that it was the best fight on the card by far, and I honestly think it was the most skilled fight on the card thus far. Um thus far it was the last fight of the night, but whatever. Um, I think that, honestly speaking, it was the best card on the fight. Uh, I think that, honestly speaking, Logan Paul was the most skilled fighter on that card. Um, and I have to commend him for it. He truly, truly did surprise me. I know a lot of people, especially those that know me and those that, you know, I told I was making this video, probably expecting me to dig into Logan Paul. Uh, as well as KSI and rip apart their boxing and be like, oh, he's doing this terribly, he's doing this terribly, this isn't boxing, they're not real boxers, but no, actually, um, I was, I mean, I'm as surprised as you are, because that's kind of what I expected to do as well, but in that fight, uh, Logan Paul moved very well. Um, I think he looked to be the most fluid in his movements and in his punches, out of all the candidates and out of all the boxers on that card, I think he had the most strategy uh, and I think he showed the most skill overall out of all the boxers on that card. Now that isn't to say KSI has no skill. I think he did a bunch of things right and I think he did a bunch of things wrong. I think one of the first things he did right was that he was very aggressive throughout the fight. Uh, I think he picked up a little bit later on as the referees and announcers kind of talked about, but Overall, I think the fact that he was aggressive obviously worked to his betterment. I think that um, he, the fact that he was trying to counterpunch Logan Paul was also a very smart move as well. Not being the aggressor isn't always the best move, or if you, but if you can, can try to provoke your f opponent, if you can try and get him to throw first and then make him pay for missing you, that is also a very good strategy. I think that overall, both fighters, Logan Paul and KSI, um, greatly, greatly surprised me with how much skill they showed. Because, I, again, I, again, I honestly, honestly expected this to be a joke. That I'd be sitting here laughing, going, ha, like, really? That's what you call boxing? Oh, I'm, I'm so much better. But no. Um, I do believe that they aren't great boxers yet. I do believe that they're not necessarily on my skill level as a boxer. I do not believe they could either of them could take me in a fight, but I do believe that uh, they have shown a lot of potential and a lot of skill with the limited amount of time that they have. 
And I think that this it should both be commended for that, and I think that overall, the Logan Paul KSI fight was the best fight on the card. Okay, maybe not the best, but definitely like top three. Alright though, but we all know that nobody watching this here is satisfied with an answer like that. Oh, both fighters did great. Both fighters uh, did good things and bad things and whatnot. Um, honestly speaking, um, it's clear that those watching this right now, especially considering how small my uh, fan base is, are going to want to know what I think of the actual decision. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't listened to the spoilers and stuff before, now is your chance to pay attention, uh, or to click off, or whatever. The fight ended in a draw. And I'm sure that anybody here watching this, that actually took the time to sit through this video, is wondering, do I think that was a good thing? Do I think that it was a truly just decision? And, uh, no. I do not think that the fight should have ended in a draw. Which also brings up the question, who do I think should have won? Honestly speaking, from what I saw, unbiased, as unbiased as I possibly can be, I'm definitely not being paid to say this shit, I think Logan Paul should have won. Um, I think he was clearly the better fighter of the two. I think he clearly had a little bit more strategy than Jake Paul. Um, I think some of the things that worked to Jake Paul's detriment, not Jake Paul, uh, that, uh, worked to, uh, KSI's detriment was the fact that he had his hands very low. He kept his hands down by his waist a lot, which allowed Logan Paul to get out, give a couple quick jabs, which would tag him and snap back his head. I think that Jake, uh, not Jake Paul, KSI, while definitely a little bit more the aggressor in the fight, wasn't aggressive enough. He'd throw a few combos and take a bit of a step forward, but he'd get countered by Jake, and then he'd just step back. And the problem with stepping back and staying within the uh, zone that he stayed in is that he kept Jake at his ideal punching range. In boxing, there are three ranges of punching. There is nobody can hit anybody, there is you both can hit each other, and then there's like face-to-face, -face, like super close, like practically kissing levels of tight. And that's like the inside. That is the inside. Uh, the outside is neither of us, neither of them can touch each other. Uh, along with both of you can hit each other. KSI could not afford to fight Jake Logan Paul on the inside. That is something that KSI could not afford. He needed to get in. He needed to get close to Logan Paul. And he needed to finish him off with things like body shots and headshots. Um, and a lot of straight punches. And my problem with that fight, or people saying that KSI should have won, is that he didn't really do any of that. He stayed on the outside, which left Logan Paul plenty of opportunities to get a punch in with his full reach and his full extended arm, which gives his punches a lot more power. And, um, the punches he did throw, or the, com the very few, because that's another problem, is he only threw one or two punches, but the very few times he did try to throw combos, were they were these big, looping haymakers, um, that really, I mean, if they would have landed, they definitely would have hurt, but, uh, all J uh, Logan Paul had to do was throw a jab cross, or a jab, a straight punch, and, uh, that would have been the end of it, and, and it was the end of it, because... A straight punch will always, always get there faster than a looping punch because it just travels less distance. A curve as opposed to a straight line. And that it seemed to me that uh, Logan Paul's punches were powerful enough to stop KSI's looping combo. And another problem with getting really flaily and haymaker-y like that is that it left him open to be clinched. I talked to a few people after the fight and they were very upset that... Uh, Logan Paul was clinching so much and honestly speaking um, yes that is a problem he it, it was tough for uh, KSI to get inside because of that and that's a strategy that tall people tend to do against shorter people when they get in close is clinch then the ref breaks them up and they're the tall people are back in their ideal punching range but the problem with, to counter that what the short people have to do is have a tighter guard um, like I said before KSI's guard his hands were, were, KSI's guard was essentially terrible 
Uh, his hands were down by his waist, and his punches were looping punches. Uh, if, his, if his hands were up, his elbows were in, and his punches were a lot more clean and a lot more tight, uh, that would leave a lot less opportunities for Logan Paul to actually clinch him. Um, I heard somewhere that um, KSI hopes to go into professional boxing after this fight, and based on what I see, I've seen from that fight, is he could do it. I'm not saying that he shouldn't, couldn't, or can't do it, but I think that he has a long way to come before he is ready to step into the ring at a professional level. Uh, hell, I don't even think he's really ready to step into the ring at a national level. I think that um, he needs to first work on his guard, I think he needs to work on getting his hands up, I think he should go back to the basics a little bit, try to be a little bit less flashy, and I do realize this was a YouTuber boxing event, so flashiness has to be a part of it, but I think that um, if KSI truly wanted to win this fight and make it a very decisive victory, um, he needed to get in closer, he needed to control the ring a lot more, and he needed to throw a lot more punches. Um, that's another thing, is uh, ring dominance. It just seemed to me throughout the majority of the rounds, uh, uh, the way I would score this round is uh, all 10-9 rounds. Uh, I don't really think that there was any major, based off of memory, major uh, um, standing eights or falls. I mean, there was the one that time where they like tackled each other and fell over, and there was that one time where Logan Paul kind of pushed KSI onto the ropes. But uh, more or less 9-10 uh, rounds. I, I scored it all in favor of uh, Logan Paul, except for the final round. Um, I think that uh, a few of those rounds were close. Rounds four and five were definitely a lot closer uh, and a little bit more of a toss-up, in my opinion, than rounds one through three. But the only round that KSI definitively, excuse me, won for me was um, the final round, and that's just not good enough to win you a match. Uh, Another thing is people are saying this fight was fixed, it was rigged, because it just seems too perfect that it was a draw, that it saves both uh, YouTubers' reputations, because if one of them lost, obviously the reputation would have taken a hit. This was a big televised event, this was a big thing. Who's gonna win, Jake Paul or Logan Paul? It also They're also complaining that it sets up a rematch, ooh, the tiebreaker, the big draw. Honestly, I think it could be a thing, it's obviously a possibility, um, it's YouTube. Things are staged all the time. And uh, even with some of Logan Paul's clinches, I don't entirely know who was the initiator of that clinch. Because KSI's punches were so loopy, he'd find a lot of his time his arms wrap around Logan Paul's body. And um, I don't know if that was Logan Paul taking advantage of the fact that his, you know, he'd throw a hook and it would wrap around his body, or if that, lo or if Logan Paul was actually clinching him, or if it was a staged thing where it was made to look like Logan Paul was clinching him, but in reality it was staged. It could be either way, uh, but I'm just gonna take it as it was a legit fight and analyze it based on that. And in my opinion, uh, Logan Paul was the winner of the fight. He should have won by a long shot. And KSI, you. Put up a good fight, you did decently. Um, in my opinion, Logan Paul proved to be the more skilled fighter in that. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, this is going to be the very first video that's going up on my channel, so please just be a little bit lenient on me if it's bad. But uh, if you are interested in my content, which is, you know, fighting and anime type stuff, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you do like these videos, uh, these like more relaxed vlog style videos where I sit in front of a camera unscripted and just ramble about fighting, boxing, politics, uh, current events, literally anything. Uh, let me know, I'd be happy to do a lot more of these, it's definitely a lot easier to do and a lot quicker to make than things like my uh, fighter fiction series or For the Sake of Tomorrow. So yeah, um, and speaking of those series, uh, those are coming in the coming weeks. Uh, fighter fiction is essentially the series where I take the... F I analyze the fighting style of a fictional character and tell you what could be used in an actual fight and what's just pure fiction. And my For the Sake of Tomorrow series is essentially going to be a bunch of boxing tutorials, so uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, until those go up, I'm not dead yet, and if you aren't either, there's always a tomorrow waiting for you.